Phlebotomy, Lesson 3.3, Serum and Plasma. Blood Review. Blood is 45% cells and 55% liquid. The liquid portion is called plasma, and it transports all other cells, hormones, proteins, fats, electrolytes, and fibrinogen. The cellular portion is comprised of red blood cells, white blood cells, and platelets. Plasma, the liquid portion of uncoagulated or natural blood, is about 90% water. Solutes, or the other elements in plasma, include proteins, fibrinogen, lipids, hormones, gases, clotting substances, antibodies, glucose, nitrogen wastes, amino acids, and electrolytes such as sodium, potassium, chloride, calcium, and magnesium. The cellular portion of blood consists of only three types of cells, erythrocytes, leukocytes, and thrombocytes. This means that there are only a few tests that can be performed on the cell portion of the blood. Most lab tests are done on the liquid portion of the blood. Remember, there are only two parts to the blood, liquid and cells, and there are only a few tests we can perform on the cells. Therefore, all other lab tests will be performed on the liquid portion of the blood. Since there are a lot more solutes or components in the liquid portion of the blood, there are a lot more tests we can do. How do we get the liquid portion of the blood and the cells to separate? We spin the tube at a high rate of speed. Using a machine called a centrifuge, the blood samples are spun for a specific amount of time, which causes the denser particles, the cells, to settle at the bottom and the lighter components, the liquid, to move toward the top of the tube. Then we can remove the liquid portion and perform tests on the plasma without the cells getting in the way. After centrifuging, the liquid portion at the top of the tube will be removed for testing and the cells, which are compacted in the bottom of the tube, will be discarded. To clot or not to clot? We have a choice. When collecting blood for samples, we can use a tube that has an anticoagulant to keep the blood from clotting, which produces a plasma sample, or we can use a tube that has no additive and allows the blood to clot naturally which gives us a serum sample. The type of test we are performing will determine the type of sample we will collect. During collection, plasma samples will be treated with an anticoagulant, which is an agent that is added to the sample to keep it from clotting. Why? Remember hemostasis? When an injury occurs, the blood will automatically begin to clot to reduce further blood loss. This means that all blood removed from the bloodstream will clot unless treated with an anticoagulant. Therefore, when we collect a plasma sample, an anticoagulant will be added to the blood to keep it from clotting naturally. These additives may actually affect the validity of the results. So what happens if we allow the blood to clot naturally? By not adding an anticoagulant to the sample, the blood will naturally clot and those heavy clots will sink to the bottom of the tube, leaving a liquid behind. This liquid can be tested just like plasma, but the liquid is not called plasma. What do we call it? Serum. Serum is the liquid portion of coagulated blood. With serum, the cells have been allowed to clump together, leaving behind a liquid that does not have fibrinogen. Serum is just like plasma, but lacks fibrinogen. Plasma is slightly different from serum because with plasma, the fibrinogen remains in the liquid portion we are testing. With serum, that fibrinogen has been enmeshed in the clot at the bottom of the tube. Serum is just like plasma, but without the fibrinogen. Fibrinogen is a complex protein that may interfere with other testing. If there was a way to remove the protein from the sample, the results may be more accurate. Serum is the preferred sample for most chemistry tests. Since plasma contains fibrinogen, which can alter test results, serum is a better option. In addition, when collecting plasma samples, the lab must process the samples very quickly to prevent contamination of the sample as the blood cells begin to die. This is not always possible. Therefore, plasma samples are used when we need quick results, but not for routine testing. 
When blood slows down or leaves the vascular system, it will begin to clot. This is a natural process where the red blood cells are bound together by platelets and fibrinogen. All blood will clot unless treated with an anticoagulant. Serum is straw colored and contains all the components of plasma except fibrinogen, also called fibrin, which is enmeshed in the clot of cells. Serum is what is normally tested in the chemistry section of the lab. It will be collected in a tube that has no anticoagulant. Serum is separated from the cells by allowing the cells to clot, usually for 30 to 60 minutes, and then spinning the blood rapidly to separate the liquid from the cells in a centrifuge. Plasma is the liquid portion of whole blood or uncoagulated blood. Serum is the liquid portion of coagulated blood. With serum, the cells have been allowed to clump together, leaving a liquid behind that does not have fibrinogen. Serum is just like plasma, but lacks fibrinogen. Fibrinogen are small fibers that are used in the clotting process. Since the cells have been allowed to clot, the fibrinogen is in the clot, not in the liquid left behind. Here's a chart describing the differences between serum and plasma. You can print it off for easy reference. Remember that all blood removed from a patient will clot unless treated with an anticoagulant. Anticoagulants are additives that can be mixed with the blood to prevent the natural clotting action from occurring. There are many different types of anticoagulants. The type of anticoagulant we use will depend on what the test is evaluating. If we want to look at the red blood cells, for instance, we need an anticoagulant that maintains the blood in an environment that red blood cells can remain intact. But if we want to examine how long the blood will take to clot, we would need a different anticoagulant that maintains all the clotting factors in their natural form without allowing them to become activated so that they can be activated in the lab and the blood can clot under controlled conditions. Different anticoagulants will work in different ways, depending on the testing need. There are several different types of anticoagulants that we will discuss later in the course. When we are evaluating plasma or serum and we need to separate the cells from the liquid, we use a machine called a centrifuge that spins the blood rapidly to separate the solids and the liquids. The heavier portion, or the cells, will sink to the bottom of the vial while the lighter portion, or the liquid, will float to the top. The white blood cells and platelets are not as heavy as the red blood cells, or as light as the liquid, so they stay in the middle and form a white layer called a buffy coat. This graphic identifies the different components of blood and can be printed for easy reference. Conclusion Plasma and serum are the most commonly tested components of blood. Plasma is the liquid portion of unclotted blood, and serum is the liquid portion of clotted blood. Plasma tubes must have an anticoagulant to keep the blood from clotting. Please progress to Lesson 3.4 to learn about blood typing.